lift off from a freezing cold Florida to the cheers of the young students of the first ever U.S. teacher astronaut. Moments later, full throttle and point of highest stress. A massive explosion. The cheering stops. The horror sinks in. Seven Americans with the highest hopes, a billion dollars worth of the highest technology, gone in seconds. The worst disaster in the U.S. space program ever. Good evening, this is the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. Never before in 25 years of Americans in space, never in 24 previous launches of the space shuttle had a life been lost after liftoff. Today, that record went down in flames. Tonight, the search for survivors turned up none. The search for answers is just starting. Bruce Hall begins our coverage of a spaceship that became a fireball and a national tragedy. The deaths in service of their country of hero astronauts and hero teacher. It was a very happy and confident crew that departed for the shuttle this morning. The future astronaut Krista McAuliffe said they had gotten over the frustration of the earlier delays. Actually, and technicians had an apple for her shortly, moments before she uh, actually entered the shuttle. Uh, but the ready. crew had to sit on the pad for an extra hour while NASA took a close Coming look up, at the uh, ice that formed during the night in the freezing temperatures. There was concern that some of that ice could strike the shuttle the, during liftoff. Uh, water is Finally, after a detailed ice inspection, Three, the word was given, two, go one. for launch. And liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. It was the first launch from the newly refurbished pad 39B in more than 10 years. NASA officials say they saw no indications of any trouble or difficulty prior to the horrifying explosion. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. The explosion appeared to destroy Challenger. The solid rocket boosters emerged from the fireball, continuing to fly uncontrollably for several seconds before plunging into the Atlantic Ocean, leaving a trail of smoke. Coast Guard Lieutenant Dave Baird watched the explosion from aboard a commercial jet. Basically, it looked like it just tore itself to shreds and, and was uh, on fire. And it looked like a, a kid's uh, airplane being uh, hit by the wind and it, it, it was a it didn't appear that anything could have survived uh, from our vantage point the coast guard immediately launched an emergency rescue effort but all that was found were small pieces of debris scattered over a wide area nasa officials put together an investigation team this afternoon but gave no indication of the cause of the explosion it will take all the data careful review of that data before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. Thank you. NASA sources say the immediate attention is being focused on what appeared to be fuel or vapors that appeared around the solid rocket boosters and the main fuel tank a second or two before the explosion. NASA bristles at suggestions that they launched the shuttle under pressure today. There was absolutely no pressure to get uh, this particular launch off. Uh, we have always uh, maintain that flight safety is our top priority. Could NASA officials announced this afternoon they are suspending all shuttle operations until there is some indication of the cause of the explosion. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. There was so much happiness this morning, so much excitement. The only tears were tears of joy. The parents of school teacher Krista McCullough standing proud as their daughter and the others lifted off. Lift off of the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. But in just one minute and 12 seconds, all the joy and all the excitement was dead, extinguished in a flash. Maximum heart rate uh, torn up inside. This is the emotional part. And immediately the reporter begins to ask, what the hell went wrong? And in the small towns that surround the Space Center, America's tragedy was their personal tragedy. I saw it. I watched it. I cried. I couldn't believe it. I came outside and I said, there it goes. And I watched it go up. 
And then suddenly, boom. It's a great loss. The life, the knowledge, surely. There were seven victims who died today and millions of others who still live. Velocity 2,900 feet per second. I'm sad. I've cried. And I will cry again. I really will. I'm sorry. Bernard Goldberg, CBS News, Cocoa Beach, Florida. Now, using our scale model of the shuttle Challenger and slow motion stop action videotape of the accident in space, let's try to go over once again just what happened. First of the model. You can see that the Challenger on either side has the solid rocket boosters, the tanks that hold the rubber-like solid fuel. The large orange tank is the main liquid fuel tank. Now, we'll rotate the model just a bit to roughly the position the Challenger was in just before the explosion. What we're seeing now is stop-action footage of the mission, just about 1 minute and 11 seconds in. We see the shuttle and one of the solid rocket boosters. At this point, a small flame leak is already visible in between. As we roll this ahead in slow motion, another flame leak appears above about one second later. Then, scant tenths of a second later, a large clear flame, and then the last massive explosion. The Challenger enveloped in a terrible fireball over the next three seconds. Finally, just past one minute and 14 seconds, you can see one of the solid rocket boosters blown aside in the top right-hand corner of the screen, the booster shooting off away from the fireball. The seven crew members aboard Space Shuttle Challenger today were Spacecraft Commander Francis R. Dick Scobie, 46, born in Washington State. He flew combat in Vietnam. The pilot today was 40-year-old Michael Mike Smith, born in Beaufort, North Carolina, a naval aviator and test pilot who'd flown 28 different kinds of aircraft. Judith Resnick, 36, hometown Akron, Ohio, an electrical engineer who earlier became this nation's second woman in space. 35-year-old Ronald McNair. He held a doctorate from MIT. He was a scholar from Lake City, South Carolina. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Ellison Onizuka, who was from Hawaii. He was 39 and last year took part in America's first manned military space flight. 41-year-old Gregory Jarvis, a native of Detroit. He was bumped from Columbia's December flight to today's Challenger flight to make room for Congressman Bill Nelson as a congressional observer. And the seventh member of this crew was Krista Corrigan McAuliffe, the 37-year-old school teacher and mother of two from Concord, New Hampshire. What started as a party at Concord High School today ended in tears as students watching the launch learned about as hard a lesson as life offers. Steve Young was in Concord. Four, three, two, about 300 Concord High School students had gathered to watch the launch of their star social studies teacher. It took a minute to realize that what they were watching was a disaster. Students were dismissed about an hour later, still no. Everybody's just like, they're all just falling apart, all the teachers and everything. I don't ever want to go there. I just, it's been proven unsafe. Afterward, the principal said guidance counselors will try to help students anguished by the tragedy. They're telling kids uh, in particular that uh, it's okay to feel uh, bad about this. It's okay to be sorrowful. It's okay to cry. McAuliffe was one of the most popular teachers at Concord High. Yeah. Students followed her training every step of the way. The 37-year-old mother of two hoped to show by her example that space is a world open to anyone. One of the things that I hope to bring back into the classroom is to make that connection with the students that they too were part of history, that the space program belongs to them. We were with them on Saturday night and her little girl um, said to me, is mommy in space yet? And I said, no, not yet, pretty soon. And everybody was just so happy. Everybody was so thrilled that out of 11,000 teachers, um, Krista was the, the one that was selected. There were mostly empty streets in Concord today and deserted shops as the town began to move. I just watched it over again. It happened again. Very sad. Very sad for the family and everybody. One friend took a picture of Krista during a town celebration last summer. She picked it up just today, left with a photo and her group. Steve Young, CBS News, Concord.